Starship's primary attribute is the ability to be fully reusable, which is considered to be a guideline for the whole project to conquer Mars. And Elon Musk has recently added the necessary information support for that possibility. The center of mass for re-entry. On Twitter, a video showed how an object did not fall or tip over as it kept the gravity or mass at its center. Elon Musk found that very interesting and he related it to his Starship generation. He said, low center of mass, a bit like our ship and booster on re-entry. It means that the SpaceX Starship has a low center of mass and its purpose is for the re-entry of the spacecraft after its future missions in space. Musk said that this feature is needed specifically for re-entry or landing purposes and this is something which would be needed a lot as the Starship is known for its reusable features. Moreover, it would not have any water or desert landing as it would be intended for Boca Chica's launch facility, where it has a specific landing area. The low center of mass means that an object would have more balance, and the more balance it is, the easier it would be to control and not get thrown away by any force or winds. The next most interesting information is from yesterday. Starship tweaks aero nose flaps. The billionaire CEO has replied to Everyday Astronaut, and here he said that the Starship would have an aero tweak to its nose flaps for better usage of the movement arm. On Everyday Astronaut's vlog, it uses the old design, which is what the CEO has clarified, especially as it would slightly change on other videos or photos taken, which may cause viewers to be confused. Casper Rocket or Stanley Creative has provided a render of what Musk was trying to say or explain, with the nose flaps having moved further towards the top, and is apart by around 120 degrees. The multi-tech CEO said, probably slightly further forward, smaller, more inward. No funny looking static arrow at top, as static arrow no longer directly in flow. Here, Everyday Astronaut was also surprised that the static arrow on the bottom flaps was not an issue. He asked Elon, will they end up pushed back around 120 degrees from each other too? And he was replied firmly after that, no, bottom static arrow pushes engine section back, counteracting Starship's low center of mass on re-entry caused by the engine section. Aiming for 60 to 70 degree angle of attack during high heating portion of flight don't want to re-enter with engines blasted by plasma. Well, the aero tweak is something that would be a massive technical concern for SpaceX, especially as it would face a lot of winds as it flies away from the surface and back. With all of these tweaks and improvements, what SpaceX's Starship is trying to achieve is its first flight or test run. You know, I gotta say, it would be fascinating to see camera views from the bay during entry. <laughs> Anyway, next up, interesting updates about Starship's monster rocket engine, the Raptor. On August 18th, two vacuum Raptor engines, presumably from Ship 20, were loaded onto a truck likely headed to SpaceX's McGregor testing facility for more testing. And speaking of SpaceX's McGregor testing facility, thanks to Reagan Beck for capturing great moments of one of the new Raptors during a static fire test. The duration of the test, 2 minutes and 13 seconds, and lots of venting from the Raptor engine test stand. Moving on, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin sets up the next space flight. Blue Origin is targeting August 25th for the next flight of its new Shepard suborbital vehicle. It's scheduled to lift off from Blue Origin's West Texas launch site at 9.35 a.m. EDT. The space flight schedule for next week will be the 17th overall for Blue Origin and the first since the company's debut crewed mission, which took place on July 20th. The August 25th mission, known as NS-17, won't carry anyone, but New Shepard, a reusable rocket capsule combo, won't be empty. The capsule will contain 18 commercial payloads, 11 of which are NASA-sponsored, as well as thousands of postcards submitted by kids via Blue Origin's nonprofit Club for the Future. In addition, the capsule's exterior will host NASA's deorbit, descent, and landing sensor demonstration equipment, a suite of technologies designed to help space spacecraft land more accurately on the moon and other cosmic bodies. This will be the second Blue Origin flight for the sensor suite, which first reached suborbital space aboard New Shepard on October of 2020. And in a first for a New Shepard mission, NS-17 will feature an art installation, Amiako Boafo's suborbital triptych. 
The work consists of three portraits painted on the top of the crew capsule on the main shoot covers. The portraits capture the artist, his mother, and a friend's mother. The artwork is part of Uplift Aerospace's Uplift Art Program, whose purpose is to inspire new ideas and generate dialogue by making space accessible and connected to the human experience. And in our last bit of information, it's going to be about NASA's chopper on Mars. NASA's tiny Mars helicopter, which has a fuselage about the size of a small toaster, has successfully flown above the planet for the 12th time. Nearly half a year after the Perseverance rover landed on Mars, the Ingenuity helicopter is still going strong on the surface of the planet. The small flyer has done so well that it has been separated from Perseverance for some time as it scouts ahead on the Red Planet. Ingenuity completed its latest flight on Monday, ascending to 10 meters and flying 450 meters across Mars to investigate what scientists call the South Seda region of Mars. The helicopter was aloft for a total of 169 seconds during Monday's flight. In its dozen flights, Ingenuity has now covered 2.67 kilometers, which is farther than Perseverance has rolled during nearly six months. For Monday's flight, Ingenuity flew out over this intriguing region to scout boulders and other geological features to help mission scientists determine whether they warrant further scrutiny by Perseverance. After slowing over this area of interest to take photographs, Ingenuity then flew back to its takeoff point. The flight involved significant risk because Ingenuity's terrain navigation system was designed to fly across nearly flat terrain. Rocky terrain could induce errors in pitch and roll during flight. When we choose to accept the risks associated with such a flight, it is because of the correspondingly high rewards, explained Teddy Zanatos, Ingenuity team lead, and Havard F. Grip, the helicopter's chief pilot. Ingenuity has proven to be a tremendous achievement. For the NASA helicopter team, a single flight would have meant success, and they hoped to perhaps complete three or four before losing Ingenuity. It has now flown a dozen missions and logged 22 minutes in the thin atmosphere above the surface of Mars. And that wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. You can also give us ideas so we can improve even more. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you won't miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.